Washington announced plans to station developmental hypersonic weapons in Europe, and Germany's defense minister announced plans to deploy U.S. long-range missiles to target Russia. The weapons deployed in Germany will include the Tomahawk cruise missile, which has an effective range of 2,400 kilometers and can strike Moscow. Moscow's deputy foreign minister said, without nerves, without emotions, we will develop, first of all, a military response to this new game. The German government is attempting to reintroduce a military draft to make Germany war ready by 2025. With zero evidence, they make the radical claim that Russia is planning to invade Europe. But it was NATO forces that overthrew the government of Ukraine in 2014. It was NATO forces that were operating bioweapons labs around the Russian border. And it was NATO forces that sabotaged the Nord Stream 2 pipeline. So far, Russia's actions have shown calculated restraint. They understand that NATO is trying to provoke a major response. And eventually, NATO actions will demand one. Viktor Orban recently visited Kiev and Moscow on an individual's mission of peace and was interviewed by a podcaster on his flight back from Russia. So that meeting was prepared in a totally secret way. First I was in Kiev to, to meet Zelensky. Then I started to organize the meeting with Putin. To make peace is a Christian action. You have to prepare yourself spiritually. So that's what I have done. Being convinced that this is the only way and that this is the duty I have to do now because I remain the only Western leader. Um, I'm the only Western leader now who can have a chance to talk at the same time with Kiev and Moscow. He asked Putin three questions. The first president, what do you think about the peace plans? And what do you think about the frame and the pr process, how these peace talks are going on and you are not invited? So what do you think about it? He said that uh, it's obvious that real negotiations cannot happen without the involvement of both parties. So whatever they are doing without him, it means nothing. They are still ready to communicate and negotiate and so on. My second question was, President, what, how do you see the chance to have a short, limited ceasefire, ceasefire earlier than the real negotiations on peace can start? And he said he's not optimistic on that. You know, Zelensky said that he's not optimistic because the Russians would use it against the Ukrainians. Putin said that the Ukrainians would use it against Russia. And what did you say to him? I said, let's consider. I understand your argument, uh, but think about it. And the third question was, I raised that, uh, President, do you have a vision or even a plan how the security architecture of Europe will look like when the war is over. What is your plan? And said, we have a detailed plan. After his trip to Russia, Hungarian Prime Minister Viktor Orban traveled to the United States, not to meet with President Biden, but with former President Donald Trump. Everybody is aware that sooner or later, the war must be concluded. And uh, we can't live eternally in the shadow of the war. So even those who are very committed to fight for Russia or for Ukraine, at the very bottom of their heart knows that, okay, we have to fight now, but sooner or later the peace should come because peace is a good thing. I mean, your mission this week is a case study in surprise. What is your essential takeaway from these two meetings? Are we closer to peace what is your assessment of the results? Everybody is, and everything is, rather bureaucratic. But if we consider this issue from a bureaucratic eyeglass, a bureaucratic approach, nothing will happen. Because peace cannot be generated by bureaucrats. It's impossible. Many people have to work for it and on it. If you don't do that, there will be no peace. It cannot be bureaucratic. It must be political. Because only political leaders can manage to to find a way, the shortest way to the peace. So what is the first step? First step is reopen the diplomatic uh, relationship and reopen the communication channel. That's happened today. So it's one important step forward. Reporting for InfoWars, this is Greg Reese.